but you don't necessarily need it depending on what um, platform you're targeting, depending on what your content is, is going to be. Billing is another big issue for us. That historically, our publishers done the billing. We've had to build out a, a billing team and, and start figuring out billing services, how to deal with credit card fraud, um, you know, how to deal with customers coming in from places like Russia and, and China, where most of the fraud comes, but the market for you know, our, our, our gamers over there, it's still a huge market for us. So we don't want to just ban every Chinese and every Russian IP because that's 20% that's of our business. Um, but it's providing 90% of the fraud, so it, it's difficult to weigh it up and decide, you know, how do you, how do you cut out the, 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 the rotten apples but keep the, the, you know, the good ones that are, are paying you good money? Um, so you've got to think about that as well. Uh, quality assurance. As a developer, we didn't really do any testing of our, our games in the past. That's something we let our publishers do. But now we're the publisher. We've got to do it ourselves. So we have 80 people employed in the dreamlike sounding job of Games Tester, um, which isn't, isn't as fantastic a job as it sounds. It is a very rigorous, um, repetitive, thorough job. But certainly on the first day of the job, you're coming in and you're playing games every day. It's not too bad. Um, but you, you're now completely responsible for your content, so you've got to, you've got to find a way of testing that as well, whether it's in-house or out-of-house resources. Um, one of the, the, the topics at Henry's session previously was, um, was comments to Scotsman online articles, and we've got a, a very similar problem, but I think a couple of degrees beyond that, where we can let people create and, and edit and manipulate symbols and, and shapes and images and, and upload them into the game so that you can customize your character, your vehicle, um, to, to look how you want to look. So we've got obvious issues like, you know, could you have the, 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 the Nike tick on something? Well, no, we've got to have a way of identifying that and taking it down. Could you have a character look like someone famous? No, we've got to identify and take that down. But there's in it all the gray areas in between. The, the, the swastika, you know, ancient Hindu symbol. Do you take that down just because someone's put a swastika up? What did they, what did they mean by it? And all these other variations in between. Um, we, we find the, there's two symbols um, people usually put up, uh, you know, in terms of that, that first reaction, yeah, I can create anything I want. So we call this problem the swastika problem. <laughs> None of us grow up, it seems. We're all little, little boys and girls at heart. Um, there's the legal, the legal sides of things, again, dealing with the, the, you know, the, the implications of, of user-generated content. Um, so making sure that we've got EULAs in place so that when our players are signing up, we know who owns what content. Uh, we know what happens if we ever have to take the service offline or part of the service off offline. Where do we stand legally? If someone's bought a uh, hundred dollar, you know, real-life dollar sword of Avalon and you shut the server down, you know, can you can you do that? Because they've they've you know someone spent a hundred dollars with you. Can can you actually take that away from them then? Which is what you're doing by taking the service offline. So a lot of legal implications we we've, we've had to think about. Um, and the, the the best bit marketing. Um, our our marketing guys are a little bit more dynamic than than these guys. I'm I'm hoping. I guess we find out a, a week on Monday. But again, as a developer, we we've never done our own marketing. We don't know how to take screenshots of our, of our project. We, we don't know how to speak to magazines. We don't know, um, you know, we don't know how to get into, into retail. We're actually out at a big show in LA right now. Uh, it's been running the last three days. Today's the last day. And we, we've got a couple of vehicles out there. So we've got an APB car that we've had, um, sort of custom paint job, and an APB truck. The APB truck is actually based in, in Scotland. So do look, as you're going up and down motorways, do look out for that APB truck. It, it does, does fly up and down motorways, completely custom designed with our characters and our, um, our logo and everything, which is, which is quite cool. Um, customer service is another big issue for us that, again, you know, we've, we've left that to the publisher. You know, from, historically, we've had players phoning us up saying they can't get the game to work. We just say, I don't know, phone Microsoft. Now we can't do that. You know, customers paying us, we have to deal with that, so we've got a customer service team. We've had to build out a, a, a call center, basically. I think it's in, in Argentina um, that we've built out this call center to deal with, you know, potentially 
tens of thousands of people calling us every day with, with problems with the game. You know, they can't figure out how to use their Sword of Avalon or whatever it is they've spent a lot of money on. Um, and, and people get quite pissed if they, you know, if they spent real money on something and, and can't you know, get it to, to, to work the way they expect it to. Um, the single most important thing, the obvious thing, in becoming a self-publisher is not to forget about your team. At the end of the day, we're still a developer, it's just we're now doing another dozen things on top. Um, but sometimes we, we go a few months and we forget about what's really important, which is without being able to create great games, without being able to create great content, there'd be no point in us doing, doing anything. And we forget about these guys, the guys that are making it all happen in the first place. Um, so it's difficult. We've given ourselves another dozen balls to, to, to juggle. Um, but the, the most crucial one of, of all, you know, the, the golden egg that's easily cracked is our, is our core team. And, and that's the, the ones we can't forget about. Um, the, the problem we're looking forward to having um, after a week on Monday is um, what to do with all the money. Here's some of my ideas. <laughs> um, the, the business model is very different. If you look at you know, us as a, a conventional games developer, when a game's in the shop for, for 40 pounds, we would get about 10% of that. We get about four pounds for, for every 40 pounds you spend on your, your game. And when a game costs us 10, 15, 20 million dollars to make, we need to sell millions of copies of that just to break even. You know, it's a tough business. If you start looking at online, you don't have the huge chunks of, of that 40 pounds that go to the publisher, that go to the distributor, that go to retail, that go into cost of goods and various other things. So the slice of the revenue you're getting back is huge. The market leading online game at the moment that I'm hoping a lot of people here have heard of, World of Warcraft, 13 million paying subscribers generating a billion and a half dollars a year. 50% net profit. Um, Farmville, again, hopefully not, hands up who plays Farmville? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Farm, Farmville's interesting, company that didn't exist two, three years ago, it's now a billion dollar company, off of things like Farmville and uh, Mafia Wars. The statistic I like the, the best is that there's, there's um, 80 million people playing Farmville, which is in itself on another platform, Facebook. You know, so you would think it's, it's quite a small portion of the world that are playing this. 80 million people playing Farmville is more than 1% of this planet's population. And they're buying virtual tractors and virtual crops and sheep, things that don't exist. And they've generated a billion dollar company out of it. So my point is, much as though we've gone at, in at one end of the market, which is the high end, you know, APB sort of a, a, a $50 million bet in terms of AAA game, high end, um, big budget. But there's so many opportunities right across the spectrum, iPhone, iPad, Facebook games, sky set top box games, website games. And there's new opportunity literally every single month. There's a new platform, a new, a new distribution model, a new business model that we're sitting around the table looking at going, you know, if only we had more bandwidth, here's yet another opportunity. Every single month this happens. So what I'm really excited about is all the, the technical and creative expertise that we have in, in Scotland that's capable of creating all these great new bits of content, not necessarily games, on all these great new platforms that we can self-publish, that Scottish companies, that Scottish programmers, artists, developers, writers, musicians, whatever, can self-publish, can upload to iTunes or the App Store, whatever it is, and become self-publishers. Every single person in this room could become a self-publisher. And that to me is really exciting, that all the money is then coming back to Scotland, not going through publishers in the, in the US and distributors based in the centre of Europe and everything. It's all coming back to Scotland. So hopefully we're um, sort of pioneering with, with APB in, in, in that sense. But what I'm wanting to see is us being tremendously successful with APB in terms of the online PC market, but there have been hundreds of other Scottish self-publishers doing all sorts of stuff across all sorts of digital media over the next couple of years. And if there's any opportunities to do anything with us, or even anything particularly interesting that I could dabble with in my spare time. I, we, we love speaking to everyone, so give us a shout if there's, if there's, if there's an opportunity.
because right now, the last couple of years, is so exciting 